Okay, so today we're going to be uh, continuing on a uh, discussion that we began last time uh, that really centers on the, the topic and the goal of being able to characterize the reality that when open systems compose, they, they do so through interfaces in a fashion that's compositional. Uh, we had spoken together in this classroom last time uh, about some features of that compositionality. And, uh, you know, I appealed to a extremely, you know, simple um, uh, physical example of, of things that plug together. And I noted if I plug this into my HDMI port, it would then effectively combine it, combine with my computer in a single unit and what's the port on the other end of this, so the VGA port would then be uh, available um, to plug into for my computer. Other things could plug into the VGA port. So we, when we're dealing with open systems, we're dealing with systems uh, that can plug into each other uh, in ways that uh, interface their ports, compatible ports, you know, plug a electrical plug into the socket and the wall, plug a, an HDMI port into an HDMI uh, socket in, in my computer, or plug in a, um, a VGA cable into a VGA port, right? Um, and and I also noted the, the compositional nature of that. And we are seeking here computationally to be able to, to characterize uh, uh, and to a certain degree to mimic that structure. I had also noted that as far as engineering systems are combined, there's a um, long time recognition within the community of the importance of separating interfaces, separately delivered interfaces for systems from their implementation so that you can evolve the system's implementation independent of, of the interface, right? Um, and so whether it's in characterizing natural systems that plug together in various ways, socio-technical systems, uh, or, or building up engineering systems, this ability to, to delineate interfaces for a system, to, to use those interfaces to plug together um, uh, different components, and to do so in a compositional way, that if we have something that goes from an interface A to an interface B and something goes from interface B to an interface C and we plug them together, we go, we get something that goes from a what? A to C, right? That was the basic idea of this. Um, and from a categorical perspective, we saw that, you know, extremely versatile tool in the arsenal to achieve this goal is structured coast balance, right? As delineated by Bayes and Courser. Uh, and we explored some of the theory, at least at a superficial level or a basic level um, for those structured coast bands last, right? And we noted those structured coast bands um, involve two categories, right? A category A, which is uh, very basic and reflects the category associated with the interfaces, the ports, the the the, the uh, feet of these systems. Um, and uh, a richer category, typically with more structure called X, which characterizes the apex, which it's a, sort of uh, characterizes the, the mechanics of the system itself, the characteristics of the system. And there are these morphisms that go between the feet and that apex that indicate for a given interface, you know, how the elements of the interface map to the to the whole system, to the system as a whole. Are we okay with this? Okay. Um, now, last time we saw the basic mathematics that makes this work. Mm -hmm. And we saw that why that mathematics gives us the desired properties. Um, and, and that explained the initially odd fact 
that we can phrase these structured coastbands, which characterize a system whose input ports are A and whose output ports are B, um, output port is B, we can characterize it in one of two ways. One, as a structured coastband where we have L of A and L of B, um, and the apex is this system X, or we could phrase it as we have um, in terms of the, so this is in the category X, or we can characterize it in the category A, the simpler category, where we have uh, input interface A, output interface B, and at the apex is R of X. And initially that no doubt seemed strange, but we saw that these two are two sides of the same coin because of the specific mathematics of what? Of, begins with A, adjunctions, right? And we saw indeed that the components referred to here, L, this L of A, the feet in this coast man phrased in terms of category X, um, L of A is referring to a left adjoint functor L applied to this foot A. The foot A itself is in the category uh, capital A, the simpler category. And by hitting it with the functor L, we promote it to, we, we map it to an object in category X, which can then have a morphism in category X, right? Up to, um, to this apex. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing for B, the output board. Uh, alternatively, we could hit the, because this is in an adjunction, there's a, that's one left adjoint functor and there's a corresponding right adjoint R. Um, and we could frame it, uh, the, the structure co span in the category A in this form, right? Um, and we saw that th this construct of an adjunction reflected this this bigger pattern of using adjunctions to, to, to use a, a slogan, translate between a similar categories, okay? Um, and um, when we have this, we have a, a category C, and I'll, I'll just cut to the chase here for ours, right? A category A, um, which is the simpler category, a category X here, which is the fancier category, and the left functor maps from A to X. It maps from the simpler to the um, to the richer category. Um, uh, so this might be set, for example, a, a simple category set. And L maps it up into graphs, for example. So a, a set like A gets, um, which which has a single element one, gets perhaps turned into a graph with a single vertex corresponding to that, right? Um, but with no edges. Um, one, two, the set one, two, three gets mapped to a graph with three vertices. But again, no, no edges, right? It's kind of the free version of this. And um, and then at the apex here might be a graph over here uh, on the on the category X. And it can get mapped down in a forgetful functor sort of way into a set one, two, three, four, reflecting that it has four vertices. Remember this? Yes. And, and the key property of adjunctions that we were taking advantage of in this um, exercise, well, it's actually twofold. The first is that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between um, for, for any object X over here in the virtual category X and any object A in the simpler category, there's a guaranteed direct one-to-one -one isomorphism, natural isomorphism, moreover, between the elements of the respective home sets, namely between L of A here and X over here and X, and the hum set between A and R of X here. That it's a one-to-one, -one, in fact, natural uh, isomorphism. And so for all intents and purposes, these mor morphisms over here in this hum set correspond onto one-to-one -one basis to this 
they're kind of, um, they go together. One specifies the other completely, completely. Mm -hmm. um, that's the feature that we achieve via this adjunction. So that was one of the key properties. And the other key property, which I emphasized, you know, came in in the context of tensoring. Do you remember the idea of tensoring to structured cospans? Do, do you do you remember what that involved? When we tensor two, uh, uh, two structured cospans, it's like putting them next to each other, right? Um, um, and in, and it was realized through co-products in category category X in this case, right? Um, so we have the co-product. So tensor will be realized. So tensoring of these structured cospans as phrased to category X will lead to a tensoring of the apices, the apexes, right? So the two apex, one from here, one from here will be, will be, um, will be, um, take their co-product. We'll take the co-product of their feet and the co-product of the legs, because we can, remember, co-product is functorial. It's a universal construction, can apply to, it's functorial. To, it's, it's realized by a mapping, um, a functor, and we apply a functor to a, to a morphism. So we can, we get a co-product of these uh, morphisms. That's just a co-product of these two morphisms. But the key thing that we took advantage of is that because we have a left adjoint, L is a left adjoint here. That's what the turnstile points to it. Left adjoints preserve what? They preserve co-limits. And because of that, by preserve co-limits, I mean, if you... If you have L of a colimit in category A, it turns into, sorry, of a, of a yes, of a colimit in category A, it turns into a corresponding colimit of L of A and L of A prime, right? It honors that coproduct. The coproduct here turns into a coproduct here, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we take the tensoring of two structure cospans, um, we get this, the co-products of all the pieces, but this co-product turns out to be directly isomorphic to one-to-one -one correspondence with with this because it honors uh, it honor the uh, left adjoint honors co-products. So in short, um, this whole thing forms a structured cospan. When we take the tensoring of these, we get a ten. Uh, a, a structured cospan out. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a structured cospan out where we have L. We have just like any structured cospan, we have, uh, in, you know, phrased in this way in in category X, we have an L of something down here and an L of something down here, right? And we wouldn't have had that for this. We would have had something else, but because of the preservation of left adjoints or the left adjoints preserve co limits, we get this. Yeah, and, and co-product is a type of color. Do you remember this? Okay. Okay, so I want to go through this example where we illustrate this, and we're going to come back recurrently to this, okay? And the two categories at issue are going to be, at first, fin set and graph. That's going to be one set of examples. And then we're going to have fin set, and we're going to have a different C set. Remember, graph is a C set? Do you remember? It's a C set category. Um. And then we're going to have another one with uh, primitive causal loop diagrams. So can we dive into this? And we'll illustrate this by by undertaking this work in this um, in this uh, cat lab code. We ready? Okay. So I think you should have it loaded in, and uh, I'd like to to explore this. Um, let's see if we can get this. Uh, you can still see my screen. Okay. Okay. So we're going to load in CatLab. Now, um, we're going to go through first again um, a case where X is graph. Okay. And um, I need to emphasize that the objects here are graphs. Okay. Each object is a graph. Now, it so happens we're going to be, and, and it's, it's important for realizing the you know, the, the, using the CatLab interface, 
that we're going to be realizing those graphs as C sets, right? We're all familiar with graphs being C sets, right? Um, so each of these is is going to be it's it's graph, but it it we're we're going to be implementing those graphs with with C sets, right? Um, so uh, here we're going to be making use of the schema graph. Okay, do you remember this schema for graphs? Where you have edges and vertices, and this is the presentation of the schema. And we have a a source vertex. Oh, sorry, source morphism and a target morphism from this. Remember that. And um, a given C set of this will have a set of edges, a set of vertices, and a function defining for each of the set of edges what's its ver its source vertex and what's its target vertex. We're comfortable with this, right? Okay, now. We're going to be doing something quite new, and we're going to see it twice: once for graphs, once for once for primitive causal loop diagrams. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, "Hey, we want we want the C set type, the the C set type, okay? Um, the uh, that is going to be mapping from this to set. We want to have an open C set type, and this is really important." What this is saying is we're going to have the, um, when we, in this case, when we promote from sets to a graph, we're going to turn these elements of the set into elements of what? Into V, to vertices, okay? That's why I've shown like this, this, Excuse me, you are muted. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was unmuted for long. Okay. So, so this is important. The, the fact that we say V, thank you, Nestor, um, is indicating that we're promoting this set into vertices over here, right? Yeah. Now, I'm, I want to make sure we're clear. This is a category of graphs. What are these morphisms here? They're homomorph. They're graph homomorphisms, right? Uh, in the set, they correspond to functions. They're one-to-one -one correspondence. For every one we have here, we have one here, right? And it's important to recognize if we added edges here, it would constrain the possible matches, right? Like if we added an edge from this vertex to this one, it would only match two vertices where there's an edge between them. The fact that we have three vertices without edges gives us a lot of freedom in matching these up here, right? It's open. Yeah, it's 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 very much like we could map any of these elements of this set into any of these four. We could map any of these vertices into any of these four. And you start to develop an intuition why these correspond one-to-one -one with this. For any one of I, any function from one, two, three to one, three, two, three, four, I have a corresponding graph homomorphism from three disconnected vertices to these to this graph with four vertices, right? Because it can map any which one. If these had edges, that wouldn't be the case, right? Okay, so we're going to declare a type called an open graph, okay? And this is going to know about, it's going to be a graph, but it's going to allow for structure code spans. It's going to allow for it to be an open graph. And we're going to see how we use this in a minute. So I'm, I'm defining I'm defining this here, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing the schema. Um, but this is going to be like an open, um, used for open C sets. Okay, now let's define some graphs. This shouldn't be anything uh, too unfamiliar. And here's our list, nice little graph. We've used it in a previous case, right? So a little reciprocal one and then a split. And you might be able to guess what I called it. Um, okay. Now, now we're going to use these things that we created. Okay. Um, we're going to create an open graph with the apex being this graph, this here graph. Mm -hmm. And we're going to define 
functions that will characterize how we map mm, from the feet to the vertex to the vertex uh, to the apex rather mm. and in this case these characterize how to map the the vertices in the feed to the vertices in this graph, right? Uh, the vertices in the graph, right? Um, okay, so let's 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 take a look at this. So I'm going to create an open graph here uh, for a structured cospan. So I'm defining a structured cospan, okay, and I'm saying. Uh, here, um, this is a, uh, for the first thing, I'm just going to have a single vertex. That's why that's of length one. So it's this guy here, okay? And I'm saying it's going to map to vertex two. That's why it's a two there. The fact that it's a single entry, oops, is because there's only one of them to map. And the fact that it's a two in that single entry means it maps into this. Are we okay with that? And you'll notice it corresponds directly with this, right? Do, do you see there's a bit of punning going on? I'm defining a function on graph on sets here. That's a, it's a function between sets. And that completely specifies this function into this graph, right? It's a pun. It's just another name for this, okay? Um, and so I'm specifying as if it's a, a mapping of sets. Because really, that's the same information that fully specifies this mapping of vertices. Do you see that? And you understand it's the adjunction that gives us this, right? It's the fact that these are in one-to-one -one correspondence. That means these are the same. They basically are synonyms for these. We can use, we can use the name for this, and we specify this totally. And, and so we're specifying that. The other one is, oh, and by the way, this four, where's this four coming from? Why do I have a four there? Because why? We have four things in the codomain and, and to what it maps or equally with this, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Now, this one is going to, you tell me, I've, I've just given you this sort of description. The, how many vertices in the in the feet here? Three and the first maps to vertex what in the apex? Vertex. What is it mapped to in the apex? Vertex what? One, right? It's saying this one, vertex one in the in the um in the uh in the feet maps to vertex one here, right? Or equally so it's like specifying one maps to one. Right. Uh, three. Uh, so vertex. Excuse me. Vertex two uh, down here. Right. That's what it's in the second position. Right. It maps to vertex what in the apex? Three. Or equally, it's like saying two maps to three. Are we okay with this? And three maps to. Four, this one here. Are we okay? And equally, it's like saying three goes to four. This is just a different name. This, it's the same information here that specifies this, that specifies this, right? And so in Cat Lab, we can specify this and it directly knows how, what the implications are here. Do you get this? Because of the adjunction. They preserve structure. Okay. And they have a one-to-one -one natural mapping between these and these. For all intents and purposes, it's just a different name for it, right? Mm. Mm. We, it's just a different name It's uh, for the same thing. Potato, potato. Tomato, tomato. Right? Um, okay. Uh, so we are specifying it in a way that's convenient as mapping between sets, and it completely specifies this, mapping between graphs, yeah? And we have this at the top, right? Okay, here we are. Here's our structured co-span. Look at that. Looky that, okay? Now we're going to look at its feet of the one we built. There we go. What's what's in its feet of the structured co-span? 
What what's in the feet? What's in the feet? This is the joy of defeat. Um, <laughs> okay, you missed that pun. But this is a fin set one. Why do we have a one? Why do we have a fin set one? Oh. Yeah, A. And fin set, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, L of B, you could think of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, Um, this is kind of like the feet are specified in this category, right? Um, okay, we could also look at the mapping between those feet uh, and the, uh, you know, the, this mapping here or this mapping here equally. They're the same information, right? And that's, I mean, that's why it's a natural isomorphism, the same information. And what we can see is it's the information we provided, right? Um, this one maps to two uh, and and these map to one. One, uh, three, one, three, and four. One, three, four. Okay. Can we see the picture? You mean like tell it, create the picture? Um, I think. Uh, I I'm not aware that it will do it. Um, but. If if uh, someone called Nona Sepharvom um, were to write some code, I think it would do it. Um, uh, I don't I don't think we can do that. I mean, uh, unless Jayan knows. Um, yeah, um, I did. Yeah, like it doesn't know how to do a two graph is. So yeah, yeah. Okay, next, let's do G end to end. Are we ready? Let's do another graph. We're gonna have another graph composed, okay? We're gonna be going through this composition. Remember that from last time? Yeah. I did the, kind of the theory, but now we're gonna see it in practice. We're gonna see it realized, enacted, no less. Are we ready? Okay, okay. So here we're gonna define this. And we're going to visualize it, and we get something like this. Okay, so we have one structure code span like this, and and now we're going to create a second structure code span. We right now we've just defined the the thing at the top, and we're going to define a structure code span. How do we define a structure code span? Do you remember what we use? We don't say it's a graph. We say it's a what? Open graph. Do you remember that? Open graph. Do you remember that? It's like open sesame, okay? Um, okay. Um, uh, so here we go. We construct a, a structured co span. Now, the input leg, the input foot, the input interface for this structured co span, how many things does it have in its input vertex? In its input, sorry, input interface, three. One, two, three, count them, right? Right? And so, so it's going to have three things here. And the first maps to, to vertex what? Maps to, you tell me. The first maps to vertex one. one. Second maps to vertex two and three, right? Okay, boom, 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 right? This maps to that, this maps to that, this maps to that, right? Again, we're taking advantage of the fact there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So there's a bit of punning going on. We'll just specify the function um, in terms of sets. And it implies, because it's one-to-one -one natural correspondence, the, the, the mapping here. Are we, are we ready? OK. So and the same thing, how about its output interface? How many things does it have? Just one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is its a. This is the map from its a, um, and this map from its b, right? Yeah. Okay, here's structure code span. We could say, hey, look at its feet. Oh, it's three and one. Okay, are we okay with that? Okay, so we're looking at this sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where, by the way, this one mapped. Which one did that one map to? I didn't color it nicely. Which does this map to? Which one? You 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 read read it off to me. Foot B or C, we're calling it here. C. Um, 
the, the right foot, the output foot, right? Put your best foot forward. This foot, what does that map to? Which one does it map to in the vertex, in the apex, rather? What? Three, three, it maps to this one. Are we ready? Okay, so that's our stru second structure co-span. Mm -hmm. And then we'll look at its feet. We could see it's mapping, there we go. Mm -hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we stand on the cusp of greatness. Okay, can we can we can we realize that greatness? Do I have your permission? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Hearing no objections, I'm going to compose the two. And you tell me what's the composition? What so the composition of these two structured cosines? L of the first, if we think of it in the category X, where we have L of A, L of B, and in this apex and in, in, in the category X, these are graphs, right? These are graphs, um, and these are graph homomorphisms. In this category, um, the first structure cospan is L of A uh, being one vertex, L of B being three. And the other, the other cospan to which we are, to which we're composing it, has L of B again being three, and L of C being one. So the resulting structure cospan composing those, it's going to be from what to what? One. one to one, from A, L of A to L of C. Do you understand that? Okay, and we depicted it last time like this, you know. One here, one here, and this. This was the output for the first structure cospan. This is the input from this one. And this whole thing is taking place in what category? In the category A or X? What category are we looking at? X. I think X. X. Is that the is that the simple category, the fancy category? Fancy category. And these morphisms are what? So, so in concrete terms, for our case, these these objects are what? They are graphs. graphs. And what are these? What are these? Are these homo these are graph homomorphisms, right? And what is this thing up here? It's a what? Push out square. And you may say, well, wait a minute, what are these injections? Like an injection is something I normally think of occurring like, uh, you know, like an insertion into a into a set. But no, these are graph homomorphisms. It's just embedding this guy, for example, and this one, this one, uh, in, in that th this can be found in this, right? Mm -hmm. This can be, there's a homomorphism from this to this. Mm -hmm. So homomorphism from this to this, yeah. Um, uh, it, it, there, um, and you can kind of get a sense with some of the color. And, and there, it's 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 uh, it, it's a it's a commuting square, and it, in fact, it it matches some naturality condition. Oh, sorry, some universality, whereby any other thing which is in a square like this, it factorizes through this up to homomorphism. Yeah. It's commutative, so this it's a commutative square going this way has to give the same result as this way, right? So, and I mean, let's just think what that means. It means if a vertex, it's easy to get lost in abstractions. If this vertex this way is mapped up to a particular vertex here, it also has to be mapped to exactly that same vertex this way, right? That's what in concrete terms, yeah. So when this goes through this, and then you put it in here, it has to go to the same place. Because remember, these ones are fused, right? Like where they go to here has to be the same as where it goes to here, right? That's why these have to commute. But And this is the best square of that sort. Are we okay with that? So let's compose them, okay? And then let's visualize it. And there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. So where did this guy go? Well, you can see kind of where he went, right? Where'd he go? 
He went here. Where did this one go? This here, right? You can kind of see by the little reciprocal thing. Where did this one go? Where did this one go? This one, right? Where where did this edge come from? I don't I don't see an edge from this guy to this guy here. Where did where where did it come from? This edge, this here edge. Where did it come from? Yeah, this one, right? Where did this edge come from? I don't see an edge from there. And it came from this. The fact that we fuse this to this, hmm? and went and this one, sorry, this one to this one this one to this one, this one to this one, means that these edges went from this to this. Because this is, is it this one? Yes, it is, but it's also uh, it's also this one, right? And so we, we get that edge. Are we okay with this? Okay. All right. Um, and, um, and you can trace out if you want that this nice property holds that anyone here when it goes mapped to this and then mapped up here, it goes to the same place as it goes here. But I think you see that. I'm trying to emphasize that, right? And by the way, like this this orange one, it's a little bit different from the others because it doesn't get mapped to, from, from any of these, doesn't, don't map to it, right? Um, and, and same thing here, yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, great. Are, are we comfortable with this example? And I want to highlight that these two compose. So there's a composition. So this entire thing, the result of composing this, the result of composing these two structure cospans is a what? It is itself a composing structure cospan. This structure cospan one, structure cospan two gives us a what? a structured cospan, right? So these are now morphisms in a category. These are actually technically equivalence classes of structured cospans because structured cospans are only because they're only associative up to isomorphism. But when you compose one morphism with another, you get a morphism, right, in this category. We get an isomorphism glass of structured cospans. So that's the whole point of these structured cospans. We've achieved not only the separation of, of interface from the from, from kind of the implementation of the body, we've also been able to compose, right? Composing A to B, structured cospan going from A to B, another one from B to C, we got something that goes from A to C. Are we are we good with that? Mm -hmm. And and there's a category of these, cospan A, um, with with uh, left left edge joint L. It it leads to the ability to compose. Anytime we have two end to end arrows, there's a guaranteed to be a, 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 a an arrow there, and arrows represent equivalence classes of structure cospans. Are we okay with this? Okay. Um, so I hope you're getting a sense here of um, of of why this works, that there's this punning going on between these two areas and why in CatLab, we can just specify the maps of sets and it gives, it's the same information needed for maps of, 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 of these uh, C sets, mm -hmm. of these, in this case, graphs. Mm -hmm. um, but the beauty of this, the beauty of this is that this holds not just for graphs, but for any C set, we can do this. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, what, what we're getting here with this categorical approach, you know, it, it requires learning this, but then you can apply it to this unlimited array of, of you know, this, this massive, I mean, infinite array potentially of, of, of different possible C sets, things you could capture as C sets. And you get all these categorical properties. And one of the nice things here is we can create these categories for any C set, this category of structured cospans where we can compose things. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to take a look at this. And, and so we can create, 
If we have a CSET, we can create an open version of the CSET with these interfaces and we can compose them, right? And get this fundamental ability to plug things together, have handles on things, as I said. It's used John by system. Um, but to do so compositionally, so we can build up from end to end ones to a bigger one. Build up just like plugging this thing into my computer gives my gives the entirety, the resulting entirety VGA for, right? Um, okay. So can we do this to, to prove this point or, or further illustrate this point? Can we do this for for this other case we've looked at, which are primitive causal loop diagrams? Okay. Um, and this one's going to be a, a wee bit different in, in, in an important regard. Here, you notice that we've been using open C-sets. Now we're going to use open attributed C-sets. We're going to have attributes. And you may recall from this chair, right? Um, I spoke with you about attributed C sets, right? Mm -hmm. um, so let's define an attributed C uh, schema, a schema for an attributed C set. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you remember this schema? Now, I've <coughs> taken the liberty of calling these things in a causal loop diagram variables. Okay. And I, I have somewhat mixed feelings. Sometimes I like to call them factors, but I think variables is the most common term. Um, and I've called it variable just to further bring home something, and, and we'll see in just a second. But in this schema, here, here's the schema, right? Um, we have variables. What does L plus represent? So schema for, for primitive causal loop diagrams. L plus is a what? Plus what? A plus, I'll give you a hint, there's an L minus, so... We have, in a causal diagram, we have what things have plus or minus? They are the links, right? Yeah. Between variables, right? It's a plus link, and a plus link has a source variable and a target variable, right? It goes from some variable to another, right? No clouds here, Shalyan. Um, and uh, and uh, L minus says, a target minus and a source minus. I don't think about that. Why aren't there pluses? Or why aren't there clouds that cause the diagrams? Think about that. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that later. Okay. Um, and uh, and then variables, moreover, what's this thing here? What, what else do we have? So we have kind of familiar structure, but we distinguish between plus links and minus links, right? So these are the objects, right? So this is going to be in a C set. There's going to be in an attribute in a, a, a C set. We're going to have a set of variables, a set of plus links, and a set of minus links. For any plus link, we'll be able to say what's its source and what's its target, right? That's a in the AC set. It'll be a, a function, right? From the set of plus links to the set of variables, set of plus for the source and of, of each of them and the target of each of them. And then similarly for the minus links. What is this? What are what are we doing here? Yeah, a variable has an attribute called V label that gives the label, right? So maybe it says like smokers or whatever. Okay. We ready? Okay. So there's our schema. And now we're gonna define an AC set type. Okay. And um this is going to uh, define a an attribute type, a, a um a type for for the C sets. Okay. Um and then we're going to have a particular type parameterization of it that where we're going to have strings. Are we okay with that? For the V labels. Okay. You know, another one you could say, well, let's use label, let's use um symbols, but we're gonna do strings. Are we okay? Um, okay, and we're going to capture this causal loop diagram, composition, modularly, okay? But we're going to build this up 
by composing three loops. We're going to have a structured code span for this loop, for this loop, and this loop. And we're going to compose them together to get the structured code span for the entire loop. Are we, are we ready to do this? Are you ready? Okay, okay. So that's going to be our diagram. Are we okay with that? Okay. Um. So we're going to build up each of those loops in turn. So here's our first. This one is going to represent the smoking addiction plane, whereby people build up build up tolerance to nicotine. So it takes more nicotine to give them the same sort of uh, hit when they use a cigarette. Um, and therefore, it tends to lead to more smoking to get that same hit. Okay, So their body adapts to it, and they end up smoking more deeply or more cigarettes or whatever. Um, OK, so this is an AC set type. And you tell me, how many variables are here? Two, Two variables for, to represent this loop. One, one of those variables is what? A smoking and nicotine addiction. Those are the labels, right? And so now you, yeah, read, read out for me those links. The first is going to go from what to what? Yeah, so so we're gonna call variable one smoking, second nicotine. So um link one is gonna go from from one to two, and the other will go two to one. Are we okay with that? We okay with that? Okay. Yeah. And you'll notice this says zero because there's no variables in here. There's no there's no attribute variables, okay. Um, we have no minus links, so I put it that way. Chai Yan may know a better way to do this, but and that's how I that's that's how I crudely do it. Okay. Um, are we okay with that? And there we go. Here's our variables one and two, smoking and nicotine. And and there we go for our plus links. It goes from one to two, and this one goes that this plus link goes from two to one. Are we okay? You could you could just read it out, right? We we good with that? Now let's visualize it mm -hmm. in the category of elements. So we have variable one, let's say smoking, variable two, nicotine addiction. Uh, and there's a plus link that goes from smoking to nicotine addiction. And then a plus link that goes from nicotine addiction to smoking. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be our first causal loop diagram, which we're going to be using later in a structure coast band. Uh, we're just gonna get our second one. Are we ready for this? Mm -hmm. So this one is gonna be about our networks. So as we spoke more, smoke more, we spend more time around other smokers. Maybe we're outside, we're, we're talking with other smokers who develop friendships with them. Um, they're part of our social support network. And the more time we spend around them, the more we'll have close relationships. And you know, a lot of our social life is, is spent smoking. And so it tends to lead to us, you know, to seek company of our friends and so on. And we're smoking during that because that's what we have in common, right? Well, that's that's a big thing. So now we have how many variables? Three variables, three plus links going from one to two, from two to three, from three to one, right? And are we comfortable with that? And there we go. There we go. It's just, you can read off one to two, two to three, three to one, three variables, three plus links. And it's called smoking, time around other smokers, closeness of social ties. Are we okay? There we go. Read it out. Yeah. We good? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we can visualize it and we'll kind of see here's variable one, variable two, variable three, et cetera. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know which is one, two, three, but, but you could. Yeah. Um, Mutatus, mutatus. Okay. Um, and then the final one will be a link here, also with three variables. What um, so three variables? What are the links going to be? Sorry. How many? Yeah. Three minus links. Yeah. Yeah. We have no plus. Yeah. Um. Right? I need something like this. So delay doesn't have any. Uh, no, we don't have. Uh, this is why I call it primitive. We don't have a way of. But, okay. 
but in class, in you know, or like a yeah. another uh, any logic yeah modeling class, yeah. You put the class polarity of the delay. No, no, delays can be minus or plus. It it like delay is you know, orthogonal. Class. That's why I talked to Jeff about that. Jeff said Well, it just happened in that diagram it was a plus. In this diagram, the the delays associated. Uh, Dr. Oz, could you muted yourself? Thank you. Uh, the one I did happen to do in the other class said it was a, was a plus, but that was just um, you know yeah. because that happened to be domain specific uh, sort of situation. Yeah. Okay, so we defined our three. Are, are we comfortable with this? We defined our three things here. We have three minus links. These are our variables: smoking, health, commitment to cessation. One to one to two, two to three, three to one. Are we okay? So you get these causal loop, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's not lose track of the fact this could have been any causal loop diagram. I mean, we're just defining one that maps our area of interest, but we could do this for any C set, right? Or any A C set. We're doing it for an A C set here, right? Not merely a C set. Okay. Um, it tells me I misspelled that. Okay. Um, bad, bad boy. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Um, now, um, we're going to now get down to brass tacks, to, to business. Okay. Now, this is different than above. Above, we had an open C set type with grab because we had, we didn't have any, any attributes at all. Now, we're going to have not an open C set type, but an open, anyone want to guess? A C set, attribute type, yeah, an attributed C set. And and here's the thing. We base it off of the A C set type um that we excuse me. Um this generic one. This is not the type parameterized one yet. It's it's off this AC set type, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's what we're going to use down here um, uh, to declare an open AC set type, meaning we're gonna be able to parameterize that with different like string or symbol or whatever. And then what is this variable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this means here, this here means, in our case, if we have a set, do you remember? Remember this? When we have a set and we have this right adjoint, which maps it over here, what is this gonna map over? So what is our X? Isn't, it isn't gonna be graphs here. Our X is gonna be what? What is our X gonna be? It's gonna be a, uh, a category where objects are what? What are the objects going to be here? They are going to be. No. Yeah, yeah, but but I, I I see people struggling with level issues. Each of these objects is just a dot, and what does that dot represent? It's a causal loop. It's a causal loop. It's a it's a if if I'm gonna be sort of uh very specific about it, uh it's an it's an atcha, right? It's a particular um each variable is going to be a particular causal loop diagram. It's going to be a specific um AC set that is gonna describe a causal loop diagram. So each of these will be a causal loop diagram. Mm -hmm. And don't get involved. I, I, this is one of the struggles people, I, ha I have it. Lots of people have it. John sees it all the time. L what's called level confusions. Um, and it's important to be able to abstract and just say, this is just a C set for, for, for all intents and purposes right now. Um, in this category, we'll just think of it as a C set. I'm sorry. We'll just think of it as, excuse me, take that back. Think of it as a causal loop. 
It's just a causal loop. Now, secret. We know it's implemented as CSAP, but or an answer. But and and there'll be another context soon where we'll take advantage of that. But it's important when think about this adjunction to just say these are just sets, these are causal loops. Mm -hmm. Each causal loop can be mapped to its underlying set. And what do these elements in the underlying set represent? They represent the what in this causal loop diagram? The the what? The variables in it. That's why I said variable. It knows when I turn this into a set, when I, this is called the underlying functor. And a, a big class of adjunctions have this flavor of being free functors to the left, loose, liberal, you know, uh, free, whereas the right ones are restricted. They are, they are, they are forgetful functors. They forget information. And here we forget the extra structure of a causal loop diagram. All we extract are its what? Variables, the set of variables. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's kind of confusing because like the, in the case of graph, uh, the left epsilon like maps the set to, to like a dot without edges. Well, well, yeah, these are the vertices. Yeah, vertices, vertices sorry, vertices. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And that's because, wh why did it map it to vertices? It's because we told it way up here, vertex. Yeah. And so this is the free form of that graph th that can be mapped freely into any of these, right? Yeah. The free form of a causal loop diagram for a causal loop homomorphism, like, if, if I had a set of three variables in a ca causal loop diagram, um, and I consider I consider homomorphisms, causal loop homomorphisms, right? From that causal loop to another one, what would give it the biggest freedom? What gives it freedom? If every of those were connected with every one, or th think about a causal loop homomorphism. Do you, do you remember that? Causal loop homomorphism? What's a causal loop homomorphism? You tell me. A, a, a homomorphism between causal loop diagrams. What is it? What does it look like? Maps variables to variables and links to links. Yeah, and it has to map links to links in a way that are... Uh, that preserves structure, and I assume that also preserves polarity? Yeah, it has to preserve polarity. You can't map, like... Uh, right. So, so uh, what's that? Yeah. yeah, there's a natural transformation underlying it if you think of them as C sets. Yeah. yeah. But we can think of just causal diagrams without getting into how they're implemented. And, 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 but, but yes, there has to be naturality um, maintained if we think of them as, as C sets, they're functors. Right. Okay. So there's natural transformations if we think of them as, as, as if we think about an implementation of them as functors as, as, as C sets or A C sets. Okay, now what C set? So so think about it. If I had a causal diagram with three variables, what would allow it the biggest freedom in mapping into other causal loop diagrams? If it had all those variables connected up to each other and or something, um, or if it had no connections at all. With all connect, like open, but open means no links between them. Right? No links between them. <laughs> no links. No links constrain because. If, thank you, Trina. Um, if if I had. A causal loop diagram. So maybe maybe I have. Yeah, and, and this gets a bit more complicated with AC sets, um, because it has to preserve the labels too. But um, but uh let's just let's just put that aside for now. Okay, I'm gonna put these in different colors. In fact, I'm gonna put this one in red in the hopes that this might show up. Um so we have one causal loop diagram and 
here. And then we have another one in red um, uh, here. And we have uh, three variables here. Okay, so the first has two variables, the second has three variables. Um, and maybe the second one has some links between it, a plus links and a minus link. And who knows? Maybe maybe there's a minus. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll put a plus up just to get you think. Um, okay. Um, so, um, oh, yeah, I should really, to teach the lesson, though, I'm going to have one. Um, one over here, okay? Um, that's disconnected. There's no, there's no connection. So. Uh, okay, if if I have a uh, minus link here, mm -hmm. what are some? Give me, give me some homomorphisms by which this could map into that. Two, Sorry. Only one, only one. Yeah, only one. Yeah. So, so. This could map to this. This could map to that, right? Um, this link, what could it map to, for example? Well, this one, right? Right? Um, and I'm thinking of it in naturality terms. Um, um, so you, it, it has to preserve the naturality we think of these as C sets, right? Um, could this... Could we map this to this and this to this one? No. no, right? So having a link constrains how it can map, right? Suppose I were to have no link between them. What could I map? Could I, could I map? Yes. Right. Now I can map to any of them, right? So this is the freest form of a causal loop diagram. No links. No links. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that's really important here. Like so like this is the freest form of a graph here. Yeah. Um, same thing with with graphs. If I if I had if I had graphs, the freest graph for homomorphisms into other graph has no edges because the edges constrain yeah. the possible matches. Yeah. Because it's got to find. It's got to map the vertices over in a way that's compatible with the edge structure, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That honors that relationship with the edges and so on. The edges have to map over so that they go from the map of the their source vertex to the map of their target vertex. Mm -hmm. They've got to go to an edge that's compatible with how the vertices. So the edges constrain. Mm -hmm. So here, when we have causal loop diagrams, so when we told it to map to vertices, that's why these got promoted to, to these vertices. And that's the freest form of that, right? This is forgetful. This is kind of free. And now for our case, for causal loop diagrams, I'm arguing that that's why we, we, um, okay, where? Okay. Uh, uh, um, okay. That's why I said make it variable. So now these sets over here, this is going to be fin set still. And these, when when I have a set like one, two, three, what is it going to map into? This is going to map into a, what is this going to be? What's an object here? Causal loop diagram with three what? Three disconnected variables. Okay. Like for a causal loop diagram with without links, then it's just the variables attributed to the variables. Sorry, three what? Like for a causal loop diagram yes. without any links, yes. it's just the attributed the variables. It's just that yeah, there there's no so links the in that. Yeah, there the, can the, be a the com complex category of variables. Yeah, the yeah, they're variables, just like these are. Yeah. Three, three yeah. for the graph case. These were three vertices. Yeah. Okay. Now, you could be excused though for saying, "Now wait a minute. You just told us we're dealing with AC sets, achets. Mm -hmm. What's the value of the? What are the labels of these? The name of variables, like yes. which means. Okay, but it can't like. What is it going to name them? Like 
the variables are going to be called Xiao Yan and yeah and Nona. Um, is that what it's going to be called? No, 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 no. It's going to give them what is it going to give them? It's going to give them AC set variables at, at attribute variables yeah. is what it's going to give them. I bet. I bet. Anyway, okay. So we're gonna we're declaring an open AC set, okay? Where it's gonna know to promote these to be variables because that's the free form of the causal loop diagram, right? And now we're gonna create for for strings the the form of that. Now we're gonna create a uh, what is this? This we are creating here a structured cospan, and what is it gonna have? Well, it's gonna have what what's the size you could just read off based on what we're declaring over here what's the size of its input set one sorry it's one yeah yeah um and 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 it maps into a set of what size so this is for the smoking addiction loop that's for this loop up here, we're dealing with the cause loop diagram first. Remember, we're, we're building up structured code spans for this, and then for this and this. This cause loop, how many how many vertices does it have? This cause the loop. Two. Two. So we're going to have a structured code span with that at the apex, okay? That at the apex. This is going to be cause loop diagrams. This is going to be this at the apex, okay? And so the, I'm telling you, the foot, the input foot is going to be of size one. Okay. I should really maybe have a reminder here. Here we go. Here we go. Um, here we go. Um, there we go. So it's of size one. And it maps to which vertex here? Well, to smoking. That's the that's the first vertex. Like I know that because. When we declared it, oh man, when we declared that that one smoking was variable one. Are we okay? So I'm gonna say that leg is gonna is gonna point to the foot there is gonna be mapped up to variable one. Are we okay with that? Excuse me, you're muted again. Okay. Um, there's a reason these are kind of boring. They're just exposing smoking. Um, and and it has to do with the fact that smoking is at the nexus of all these things here. Um, but it's we're constrained to two legs, one input, one output. If we had more flexibility, we could have like one leg for smoking, one foot for smoking, one one for nicotine addiction or something like that. Instead, I'm just gonna have them both be smoking because I know when I when I um, plug it to the other one, I know I need smoking in common between them because they they plug together around smoking. See that they all link together here. Yes, Cheyenne. Right, right. I could have changed the first one to be two, in fact. Yeah, that that I could have done. And uh, I chose because I wasn't sure if I was going to compose on the left or the right. And so I I, I just did that anyway. Um, OK, um, so so I happen to be using smoking for for both of them. And now we're going to examine the feet of it. And here, here are the feet. And notice that it knows how to deal. It's the interface to the smoking variable. OK? And here's the map. And it says how to map that in. It maps to variable one in that loop. OK? And now we're going to define a structured cospan for this other loop, this loop, 
which has its own causal loop we built up earlier. Now we're going to find a structure cospan. So what's going to be at the apex of that structure cospan? What's going to be the apex here? It's going to be this causal loop diagram. These are remember this is the we're not in graphs anymore. We're in causal open. We're in causal loop diagrams, right? This is going to be a causal loop diagram. Mm -hmm. What is this going to be? It's going to be a causal loop diagram that is promoted up from a set and just consists of a disconnected variables, right? Kind of free, free yeah. causal loop diagram or something like that, right? Okay. Um, so, so we did smoking addiction. Now we're going to do, we build our networks and then our networks build us. That's what I call that loop. And, and uh, I just define that, okay? Uh, just define that co-span. And then I'm defining the final structure co-span too, which is for that other loop, right? So I'm defining it for this guy, okay? And and there I need two feet and I'm saying the two feet are input is uh, smoking, output is uh, smoking, just so I'm sure I can plug them together really easily. Mm -hmm. But again, this is kind of, pointing to a limitation here because I, I need to make it so I can always make the others link in with smoking, okay? Um, and yes, I, I had a bit more flexibility than I exercised, but really the, the solution Shayana is going to present next time, which is structured multi bands, which is a generalization of this. Okay, now, are we feeling okay about this, what we're doing? So just just to sort of make it clear, we we define causal loops for each of these separately. We define structure cospans for each with compatible legs. And now we're going to link them together. And we're going to get this, we're going to build up two first into a structure cospan, and we're going to compose with a third and of all three together. Are we okay? Okay, okay. So let's go, let's go check it out. You ready? Okay, okay, so here we go. I'm, I'm executing this if I didn't already. Okay, so now we compose them. We compose first loop with addiction, with second, with our networks. So now we're going to have those two together, okay? So now we have a structured co-span that has, get this. Uh, you're muted again. We compose together this one and this one. How many variables are in the resulting structured cosmos? Four. four variables. Right? Um, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, are we okay with that? Because we've identified smoking from this one or smoking from this one because they were in shared shared thing here right yeah um uh okay are people feeling okay about this okay so okay so we first um one more uh so we here redefine the structure okay so we we compose them together and now we're looking at what's in the apex well we have four variables smoking nicotine addiction time spent around other smokers and closeness to social ties. These two were in the first one, right? Right, remember that? These three, this, this, and this were in the second one, but we have smoking in common as the nexus. Are we uh, okay with that? Now let's 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 look at what the plus links are. And and again, I, I think, um, what's the best way to do this? I, I, I've got to find a, a better way to like, you know, pardon me for just a sec. Um, why can't I go to downloads? Uh, bum, 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 bum. What, where is the, my diagram? Um, uh, 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 I don't, I, I show you, what is it? It's in our hangouts, right? It's in our, it's in our hangout, I think. Uh, I, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Um, hangouts to the rescue. Okay. Um, so we have this composed with this, right? So now we have how many links? 
We said there were four variables. How many links? Two, Two um, and then five, right? Okay, and they're all what links? Plus or minus? Plus. They're all plus. Okay, so can we read them out? Uh, okay, um, so L plus, right? Um, so we're viewing the apex, the, the, the result of, oh, the result of merging these two, right? Uh -huh. um, so the first of them goes from one to two. Which one is that? Smoking, smoking nicotine addiction. The second goes from what to what? Addiction back to smoking. I I'm, I'm think I'm going to, for just to avoid switching workspaces while I do this, I'm going to switch this back here. Then I just have to switch windows. Okay. So, so we've got these, we've got these two, right? Yeah. Now, now how about the next one from one to three? What's that one? To time spent around other smoker. How about from, how about link four? Time, time spent around other smokers to closeness of social ties. Yeah. And then from socialist to the smoking. Do we see how this represents the composite? And what's amazing is that it's doing this in a way that will, we can do for, for any other AC cell, right? We're just making use of these super general mechanisms and we're saying, compose this together. And all we have to do is tell it like, do it with variables being the free form that 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 get get created. Okay, so moreover, we can go graph that in the category of elements, and this is what it looks like in the category of elements. And what it lacks in beauty, it makes up for in power. Right here we go. Which loop is this? Which loop is this? This one, right? Which loop is this? This one, right? And they're joined at this one. Do you get that? Do you get that? They've been fused together in a way that's totally general for AC sets, right? Um, uh, all we had to do was tell it this this little bit of information. Now let's complete the thought. Can we? Hearing no objections, I am going to now compose that composite one with these two with the one which had health concerns motivate cessation, okay? This one here. And by the way, you notice I, I put it on the right here. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I just made them all have input be smoking, output be smoking, just because I wasn't sure what I did. Like when I do this one, this one, and then that one on the right or that one on the left, I didn't want to have to worry about it and it was getting late and I went to sleep. Um, so, so forgive me. Um, but we composed this, okay? So we composed with the composite. Let's go see what it looks like. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Isn't that beautiful? beautiful. Okay. Um, uh, it's, look at those three loops. You could just see them. The first, This one, which loop does that correspond to? Two. The two. And this one, and this one, well, I, I don't, uh, well, we, actually we could tell. Which, which which one is this one? Yeah, the polarity. It's this one. And this one is from this. It's got to be with this one because it has all the L minus. You get it? Yeah. By the way, this thing here, what I mean, it looks ugly, but all it's waiting is for someone in the cephal group to write the thing that will turn this into a nice looking causal loop diagram. And, and that's what they do for like Sean Wu did you know, an epidemiologist uh, did for graphs, I think, or oh, he, he did for, uh, for uh, sorry. And did you do that or did yeah, you did that? Yeah. So, so Cheyenne could tell you how to do it, but basically someone just has to make a little thing that will say, let's make causal diagrams display nicely and, and give the, the way to do that. And, mm -hmm. and then we can show an honest to goodness thing. And I think, we could show the name of the variables just like this, which would be a real contribution to the community, actually. Um, but let's look more, you know, uh, at at how this is defined in sort of database terms, right? Okay, how many how many variables does this have? You tell me before we look at the answer. Six. 
six variables, right? Mm -hmm. Right? What are the six variables? One, two, three, four, five, six. Are we okay? Well, um, okay. Um, uh, here are the six, yeah? Um, and L plus, well, we know what the L plus did because all of them are still there from before. That isn't going to change. L minus, what is the L minus going to go from? You tell me, what is the L minus going to go from? Well, it's going to go from smoking to health, right? Smoking, health, and then health to commitment to cessation, and then to cessation back to smoking. Do you see that? Do you see how this encodes exactly this? Yeah. And it does so in a way that, you know, we've just used these very general mechanisms. We haven't had to, you know, say, well, for kind of loops, you have know, all these special arcane rules. No, no, no. It's just a, a set. It's a, a atchet. It's just an AC set. Mm -hmm. And what do we have to specify? Well, we have to, you know, go and, and say, hey, make an open one. And the way we the way we have a free one is is by specifying where where am I? Um specifying the, I guess it was under here, specifying variables, right? Right? Yeah. And and then it allows us to then create structure cospans of them and stick them together. And and to do so in a compositional way where we can take the composite first of these these two and then take the composite of this with that composite. Are we okay with this? Yeah. And we can visualize it and we can use all sorts of, you know, categorical additional mechanisms if we wanted to, whether it's like co-product of it to put them next to each other. Yeah. We could we could take uh, pairs if we wanted to have all well, combinations of variables and combinations of 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 links or what have you, uh, and we could even do fancier things if we wanted to in terms of like logic uh, on these with what's called a subobject classifier. We can even have maps between these, all because these are C sets. The mathematics is in common. It's it's the same underlying mathematics that apply here as apply in all these other areas. And that gives us tremendous power. And the fact that we've encoded this mathematically with strict mathematical rules means we get access to all these powers. It's not just trapped in some weird data structure, you know, in code where we have to write more code. We just reuse these general mechanisms. And those general mechanisms can give us tremendous flexibility. So Xiaoyan next time is going to be introducing structured multicoast bands, which will give us much more flexibility yet and will allow us to escape this notion that we always have to have input and output to have this sort of undirected nature where these things can, you know, sometimes there are inputs and outputs like this. There's an input here and there's an output there. But there are some things in life where there's no input output, like with a, with with a if I have a resistor as a circuit element, neither is one output or the the input. It just there's a certain relationship between them, and there are a tremendous number of things in life where there's just a certain relationship between them. There's no strict input output, and structured multi coast bands and undirected wiring diagrams will allow us to capture this kind of what Evan Patterson calls the morally undirected nature of these things, and it just kind of plug them together in a much more flexible way. We're not restricted to just two legs, input, output. We can have things more generally, okay? Um, great, I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, okay. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for your patience, folks. <laughs>